All right, let's talk what's going on in the sear movement test that I've demonstrated before. The sear movement test assumes that the sear moves. It doesn't really matter why, just that it moves. When the sear moves, it pushes on the back of the trigger bar right here. This surface is what the sear interacts with. It pushes on the back of the trigger bar, pushing it forwards. When the trigger bar moves forwards, it acts upon the safety lever, this little thing right here. The safety lever uh, has this kind of a downwards V, an upside down V sort of arrangement. That'll be important later. The manner in which the sear, trigger bar, and safety lever interact seems to correlate strongly with whether an FCU fails or does not fail the full sear movement test. With my FCU, moving the sear moves the trigger bar diagonally down and forwards, then snaps diagonally up and forwards, as demonstrated there. It's as though the trigger bar was being acted upon by the disconnector, pushing it downwards. That correlates with the different movement of the safety lever. With my friend's FCU, moving the sear moves the trigger bar strictly forwards. There is no disconnector-like behavior out of his trigger bar. So what's the difference? What's really going on here? It appears that what is happening, this last surface furthest away from the bar itself is what the sear interacts with. It appears that what is happening is the back leg of my sear is catching on the back corner of my trigger bar. The back leg of my friend's sear is purely catching on the back of the trigger bar. So on mine, it pushes the trigger bar down and forwards. On my friend's, it just pushes his trigger bar forwards. The trigger bar movement changes how it interacts with the safety lever. Remember, the bottom of the safety lever is an inverted V, with the trigger bar controlling it by being nestled right here in the apex. When the trigger bar moves down and forwards like it does with my FCU, it moves the safety lever virtually not at all until the trigger bar slips off the sear and pushes forwards and up. This then deactivates the striker safety lock up in the slide. When the trigger bar moves solely forwards, it moves the safety lever immediately and in direct proportion to sear movement. This difference in trigger bar and thus safety lever movement changes when the safety lever defeats the striker safety lock during the sear movement test. When the trigger bar moves forwards and down, the safety lever does not seem to defeat the striker safety lock before the sear moves enough to release the striker. When the trigger bar moves solely forwards, the, striker, the safety lever seems to defeat the striker safety lock before the sear moves enough to release the striker. With a sample size of two, Disconnector-like behavior 
seems to correlate directly to failing or not failing the SEER movement test. Configuring both my FCU and my friend's FCU to demonstrate disconnector-like behavior correlates with both pistols not failing the full SEER movement test. Configuring both my FCU and my friend's FCU to not demonstrate disconnector-like behavior correlates with both pistols failing the SEER movement test. I do want to note, whether an FCU demonstrates disconnector-like behavior outside of a grip on a workbench like this is not necessarily indicative of how it will behave in the grip. And it is easy to misconfigure an FCU outside of the grip. Let me demonstrate for you how to reliably tell whether your FCU demonstrates disconnector-like behavior in a field-stripped grip. Take your field-stripped grip, FCU still inside it, put the disassembly lever to the assembled position, pop the slide release, press the disconnector. The pistol now thinks that it is fully assembled. What we're looking at is this trigger bar. What you should see is the trigger bar move down and forwards, and then snap up and forwards after a click. That is the disconnector-like behavior that we are looking for and seems correlated with not failing the SEER movement test. This is what you don't want to see. Flip your assembly lever into the assembled position, pop the slide release, press the disconnector lever, then watch the trigger bar. And on this one, you should see it move forwards and back with no downward component. This disconnector-like behavior, whether intended or not, appears to be necessary for a pistol to not fail the sear movement test. Simply put, the safety lever needs a mechanical way to differentiate between the trigger bar moving because it was pulled forward by the trigger versus the trigger bar moving because it was pushed forward by the sear. If pulling the trigger causes the trigger bar to move only directly forwards, but moving the sear causes the trigger bar to move diagonally down and forwards, that disconnector-like behavior appears to be enough of a differentiation. Configuring the FCU to either demonstrate or not demonstrate disconnector-like behavior while in the pistol is a matter of two parts. Thus far, I have been able to cause both FCUs to demonstrate disconnector-like behavior using a non-skeletonized flat trigger from SIG. And this specific trigger bar. Unfortunately, I have not been able to identify a reliable way to determine which type of trigger bars will or will not configure an FCU to demonstrate disconnector-like behavior during sear movement. Because this 675 trigger bar creates disconnector-like behavior in both FCUs. This 675 trigger bar does not. There is no easily discernible difference in dimensions or anything between these two trigger bars. This set of calipers could not show a measurable difference between the two parts in any way. 
So, to summarize, I have demonstrated for you a much easier to perform test to determine if your FCU demonstrates the disconnector-like behavior that seems to be correlated with not failing the full sear movement test. I have not yet determined a reliable way to configure an FCU with commercial off-the-shelf parts to produce disconnector-like behavior. Right now, it's just trigger bar roulette. We're closer to determining what is really happening to cause uncommanded discharges out of P320s, but the search for a reliable fix continues.